best security to have this um, if it's not usable. So a good example is remember that with a Mander phone. So obviously she preferred not using that. So we need to address security and privacy issues. Um, and I will go now from the bottom layer to the top. And we will go through all these sections within the talk. So we start with basement security and firmware. So there's there are huge problems for the GSM network, which is certainly under Android, but we need to look at it to understand what kind of problems we need to deal with. We have Android operating, the Android operating system itself. Like um, there are huge problems concerning uh, permission management, concerning um, um, the, uh, the up uploading of data um, to, to Google. Um, then we have data encryption. So we, we have an operating system now which supports data encryption, but since the um, encryption is, is bound to the pin of the unlock pin, it doesn't help because we do not really save and uh, protect our, our master key to do the encryption. So we have a problem with the communication tools, uh, by default all unencrypted or not necessarily secure. We have a problem with search, we have a problem with browsing, we need to deal with the apps, like mostly with the default apps that come with Google, which are all very fancy, but Google earns money by collecting information. So if you want to reduce um, um, information leakage, we actually need to address to get to get loose from, from Google and the App Store. So and finally, we have remote wipe, we need to deal with theft. So how, um, uh, if, if the device gets lost, how we can make sure that it's wiped. So, so we start with basic security models. Um, basic security and firmware. There's a whole layer of security issues that hang below the operating system. These issues are not network related, and it's very hard to defend against most of them. So it's uh, it will become quite important. Anyway, we have to at least shortly talk about that. GSM. GSM has numerous security flaws. Any device can be identified by two unique and non-changeable identifiers, EMI and MSP. With these data, it is possible to build detailed location profiles. Compromised base stations, so-called MZ catchers, can redirect phone calls and switch off GSM channel encryption without notification. These devices are cheap and broadly used by law enforcement. Since fake base stations leave traces, they can be detected by monitoring basement activity. The GSMK cryptophones seem to provide such a feature. Yeah. Um, most of the uh, defects of the GSM network, and most of the attacks you can run, basically um, focus on the um, second generation of the network. So basically, G GPRS and edge. So um, it would be sufficient to disable 2G to make things work better. So in Android you have that switch disable, like limit to 2G, so to save um, to um, save battery. So basically, I think there the the the, um, the blackberries. Some of them have a switch which is disable 2G. And that's the point. So if someone implements an application which is able to at least alarm on um, on, two, on switching to 2G or activate the flight mode, that would be a big help. I guess you cannot get access to the baseband processor, so the, the, the baseband firmware, but, you, but we could alarm on this. So that would be very, something very nice. Um, the second issue basically use encrypted voice over IP, trying to tunnel through the GSM network um, to home your own VPN service. If you are, if you want to get really secure, you can use something like Tor, and um, if you are, you are, you are much better. We can take on that later. So, um, Salem SMS, there are also serious issues with SMS. So-called Salem messages do not require user interaction and don't need to get acknowledged. Such messages may reveal location information, interrupt calls, Disconnect from the GSM network and make sure you stay unreachable. Phones can also be switched off remotely or forced to crash. 
Yeah. Um, from another talk, I once got numbers about like how like, is this really used? Obviously, you will not know if you get inside of this. So um, German law enforcement used it 440,000 times in 2010. I do not know the numbers now, but they are used and most of it, most of you might have got these messages already on your phone and never realized it. So let's get to our third horrible topic on this. Firmware hurdle. Mobile phones have two different processes in the master state configuration. The one running Android is only its name, right? So master of your mobile device is the base file processor running a hidden OS which is stored in the firmware. The hidden OS has access to at least microphone speaker and GPS. It is proprietary closed software and known to be burglarized. Remote malicious code execution is possible. For example, it lets an attacker started to pick up your phone. Such attacks stay in temporary memory, which makes forensics difficult. Defense is known to be very hard and includes rather drastic measures. Like what? Yeah, that's not the one failure part. Basically, you need to replace the baseband firmware. So there's an open project we provided a link um, on the web page. So this is not for my mom, so I cannot secure that. So um, it's not for the faint of heart, you can play around with it, but it's um, it's basically a no go we can um, easily address. So we now come finally to the topics where we can do a little bit. Uh, Wi Fi. Um, it takes only minutes to serial digits to improve the security and privacy on your device with uh, issues concerning Wi Fi. Android devices scan for Wi-Fi networks by default. Not even turning Wi-Fi off will change that if your device runs Android 4.3 or higher. Auto scanning has to be deactivated separately. Oh, that means that the device keeps sending unencrypted requests containing the preferred, your preferred Wi-Fi network. An attacker can compile a complete list of the network SSIDs. Using these network names, the attacker can create a fake access point. Can create fake access points. Uh, your device will try to connect. Passwords are stored in plain text. It gets synced to your Google account unless you are checked back up by data. The These passwords seem to keep stored there forever in plain text. So. Google knows not only the location of almost every Wi-Fi in the world, it also has the passwords to many of them. Rather scary. Yeah, so um, basically the way to go is um, keep control over when you activate virus alarm. Some people keep that activated all the time. That not only wastes your battery, basically you distribute a list of all SSIDs you know all the time. So. You have an option to disable auto scanning, so um, you can look this up. Uh, it's also on the website where you can change the configuration and don't use Google Maker. Disable the Google Maker. It's um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. So we come uh, to the issue of parking and go address. There's a number of custom ROMs providing enhanced security features for Android. All these having come up, most of the most famous is of course I am, all these having come on that Google apps have to be installed separately if needed. The antigen mod uh, comes uh, with a fancy install that works on a lot of devices. You might also try a uh, paranoid Android. But even the standard Android gives you a lot of options to improve security. Additionally, there are built-in apps and services which you better deactivate. We have compiled a list of settings that you can check out on rather than use slash Android so you don't have to have this. Yeah, it's, it's a much longer list, but basically uh, just pick a couple of them. So we tested that configuration uh, on several devices. Um, it should have at least Android 4.3 to use some of the features, some requires the other get mod um, installed. Good results. We cannot guarantee that 
things will break on your device. Um, not that you cannot re-enable certain features or just you might need to redo some of the configurations if you experience trouble. Contact us if you experience trouble or Twitter us and we will try um, to fix that on the, on, the, on the configuration. You will lose definitely convenience, like word suggestion, things like this doesn't uh, work anymore. You need offline dictionaries to address this. And if you're not happy, we go to all the settings. Okay. The permission management. Android's app permissions management is a mess. And what's even worse for any Android devotee, it falls way behind the wall in iOS. Sorry, that's a shame. First, there is no way to find out what permissions an app wants to reserve before clicking the install button. The Play Store conceals this important information. Communicating this publicly would also exert some pressure on the developers not to claim permissions they do not obviously need. Second, the descriptions of the permissions are not very clear. Even if a non-expert user wants us to read them, he or she will possibly not fully understand what they mean. Third, it's impossible to deny permissions before installing. Even Facebook apps provide such a mechanism. Fourth, it's impossible to remove permissions of an installed app with standard Android. Google allowed the users to do so in Android 4.3, but only for some of the permissions and without including this feature in the UI. An extra app like Launch App Ops added to this in UI and made invoking the permissions possible. Alas, Google removed this feature in Android 4.4 without even convincing arguments for doing so. Possibly they back it down to the pressure of the app developers. Maybe some of you can shed light on this. <laughs> so, um, the only way to gain some control about the app permissions is actually to install a custom ROM at least um, at the moment. Um, I think the, um, the, the, the privacy guard code is still in Android 4.4, 4, but um, there are no open source apps um, at the moment, to my knowledge, to reactivate it. It's only working for it free, and uh, it will make some positive experience with the uh, Xiaomi game on it. So, um, the privacy guard, you can use that to revoke other unnecessary rights and um, again um, provide configuration details on virtually um, Android. Now I come to the file system and file encryption. Starting with Android 3.0, file system encryption is possible on most devices. It uses Linux DM crypt module, which we consider secure. Encrypting the file system does not seem to affect performance, only the booting camera of the dots. That's the good part. Unfortunately, the encryption is limited to the section that is supposed to contain the personal data, the directory slash data. This excludes any external storage like SD cards. But there is an even more serious flaw for Android's file system encryption. It uses the same password and pin as the other screen. So, you have to enter this key every time you unlock your device, although the system only needs to do it. Therefore, you must search between a secure password and usability because you unlock your device at the time. This design would only make sense if the file system is encrypted every time the device is locked. But, if this isn't the case, we still have access to all files via the debug mode. This is designed to fail. Remember, if you activate encryption, you just encrypt one folder, which is the root file system. You do not encrypt what's on your SD card. So if you place your private keys there, and not, not protect it. So then, the key you're using is an operating winner. Like, there's, in the file system encryption, you have the master key, which is protected by the key you're, uh, you're using um, to like if you place an Android, which is obviously the pin or an easy password because you need to enter that password every time you unlock the screen. So you will not choose a bit uh, difficult password. And that simple password is the password used for the device. So the thing is that that, that password is only used when booting up the device. So um, you, in theory, if you have root access to your device, you can. Set new password to be encrypted. If the 
bicycles up, you enter the long proper password, and then for unlocking you can continue using the easy password. But you need to change some, you need to do some reconfiguration um, as, uh, as you do um, on, a, on a terminal session. We now finally head over to apps. Uh, start with the communication tools, because they are especially critical. In this section we will deal with telephone, SMS, chat, mail, surfing, and the cloud. Let's start with the telephone section. As I said previously, GSM is broken beyond repair. If you want privacy for your phone, of course, you'll have to use sport via your channel. That's just what the Blackboard makers propose to you with the service Silent Circuit Phone. You can secure a SIP connection with TLS and SRTP or SETRTP. Anyway, there are two problems with that. First, most of the cell phone providers do not forward what In this case, you need to set up a VPN unless you have access to the internet via Wi-Fi. VPN can cause problems due to latency. Second, it's hard to find a VoIP provider which offers encryption. We successfully used the VoIP cards, little phones and uh, CSIP still. I think uh, you had uh, some interesting talk with the uh, yeah. <laughs> provider yesterday. Yeah, so um, I, I refused a long time to use voice of IP. So, because I thought, oh, well, that's, that's even more insidious, just GSM. But um, I changed my mind since I thought, okay, um, GSM is completely broken. With voice of IP, on the long run, we have a chance to get this secured. And Tor is getting, like the Tor network is getting close to real-time transfer. So, in theory, you can do um, voice of IP calls also for the Tor network. It's worked with Skype. So, um, so you could set up own infrastructure. You can use it, um, use encryption. Sure, TLS handshake is not not the best, but it's there. You can do a proper key exchange. You can uh, use a um, uh, uh, real-time streaming protocol, which is like invoice or I mean, a secure variant of it. So, uh, the voice of IP provider, most of them do not support that. There is the hostel infrastructure, it's an um, open, open source telephone network. We provide a link for that. So, where you, this is, you can, um, you can use a free, uh, secure voice of IP network, which you can, you can pick the source code, install this at home, and provide a secure, Telephone service for the family. You can ask friends to enroll for the postal service. It's not linked to the public telephone network, but you can set up secure channels with that. And yeah, so that's that's pretty good. The other option is Mumble. Um, Mumble is used for gaming. There's an app called Mumble. And F Droid, you get that app for free. It's an open source app. But you can also use this to do secure um, commun um, communication, but then using Mumble, it's not a voice of IP standard. Um, Red phone, um, Edward Snow said that that's a secure app, unfortunately, only available on the, uh, on the Play Store, so I'm not really trusting that it's from, with, from uh, Whisper Systems. And this was for by Twitter, like in 2011, so I'm not really trusting this. And obviously you have commercial services like, like Silent Phone, but I would like to see this from the, from the voice of IP providers. That would be really, really nice. And so far, I see there's not much understanding in this regard, and voice of IP providers seem to think there is no demand from the customers. So you may want to ring a bell there. So just head over to the voice of IP provider of your choice and tell them there is one. <laughs> okay, let's go to instant messaging and SMS. What sense acquisition by Facebook pushed the alternative instant messages forward? Um, especially three bar and telegram, which promotes uh, more privacy and security. 
both of these apps contain closed source software anyway. Free alternatives are text secure or chat secure with OTR encryption. You can keep uh, certificates in sync with the app key sync. Yeah, you can find you can key sync on the sides of the Guardian program. You might want to know it, maybe it knows it. It's a group around the, the developers of the so, um, video, we look for sometimes for uh, like Android video chats, like open source software, using voice, um, encrypted voice of IP. There is a service called Litsy, but it's unstable. But I used it for more than a month between um, South Africa and Germany. It worked. So, and there were no disconnects, and there were like. Good, good enough picture to use it. So it's not Skype, but it's a bit more safe. Um, then we have WebRTC, so that's in every browser, but I would like to see a nice implementation actually using that. Currently, it's not there. So then, obviously, we also have like my advice is to use, to get away from SMS, to use something like 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 text secure also only available on the on the Play Store. So I'm not fully trusting that, but I used the old version for years and I was quite happy with it. I know they love them playing text, <laughs> but it might make things a little bit better. So ah email. Okay. Um, how many of you actually use secure email on your Android device? So that's that's. Um, Okay, so um, there is K9. K9 is a really nice email client. Um, there's an extension for K9, which is Android Privacy Guard, which is a part of Group Privacy Guard. Hopefully, the real Group Privacy Guard um, implementation will work with K9 at, 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 at a certain time as well. It currently doesn't. First, install APP, then Karma, Karma that's why it does, currently doesn't work. All your keys works. My wife is not in computer science. We're using it for a long time. She doesn't have any trouble with it. So I guess some of you in computer science, in, in, in Android program, will get it done to use crypto. So ask a friend, ask, ask me, we, we, we set up keys and you, will, you, you can use it as a secure email on your Android device. You can get signatures here. So, um, so I'll think about it. Just the, the finger six day character private key that guy did. Okay, cloud services, final part of uh, communication tools. There are several open source group applications out there. Okay, secure search and browsing. 
um, the official Android releases include the Google Search app. Search app alternatives become more important thanks to Google Now, which is integrated with Google Search as we said before. Google Now's very concept is not compatible with a race awareness in terms of privacy. There are several less known search apps around that seemingly, seemingly focus on privacy, but as most of them are closed source, we have no criteria to trust them. Also, most major search engine providers have released similar apps. In terms of privacy and tracking, we think that the DuckDuckGo is the most promising. It also permits routing, routing search requests via the Tor Firefox Nova, you can use. Okay, we have to speed up a little bit. 
most worrying are the fundamental flaws beyond the Android layer. GSM is broken. The hidden up OS and firmware is possibly highly vulnerable. But there is no reason to despair. Many other problems can be fixed with fairly easy methods. Following the steps we suggest on our web page, um, will not furnish you with an NSA proof device, but it definitely makes eavesdropping and interception much harder. Um, okay, so these are the final words. So, um, please use crypto. There's now nearly 20 years we have the tools, but we are not using them. They work in Android devices. You're not only protecting you or your communication with your family or your friends. You also protect whistleblowers, people who depend on it. And if they are the only small community using security, it will not help them because they're too small. So I recommend everyone get encryption running on your Android devices, on your big computers as well, whatever you have at home. Use crypto. It's not hard. Do it now. That's all. <laughs>